This is his anima, which is still deep in his unconscious. It is his feeling function. Jung represents the situation as follows. Pali is operating only with three basic functions in consciousness. The fourth is mired in the unconscious, uh, deep in the unconscious, and so can lead to energy surges, which can constellate archetypes, which can bubble up into consciousness as archetypal uh, images or symbols. And Jung warns Pauli at this point that uh, there will be a, a play with images, and some of these images will be quite terrifying, but stay with it. The end result is a reconciliation between apparent irreconcilables, in this case, the, the conscious and the unconscious. Pali's dreams shift to uh, 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 topics concerning the numbers three and four. He wonders, Pali asks Jung, why four? Why the quaternity? The four seems to be something which uh, Jung emphasizes. Three was good enough for Kepler, who was Pali's intellectual hero, and also for, for Christianity. And could it be that at this point, Pali is beginning to realize that we recall the angst, the angst in moving from three to four and discovering the exclusion principle. Jung tells him that basic to alchemy is a reconciliation of opposites. Ancient myths tell us that in deep history, there was a shift in the world's consciousness between femininity and masculinity, with the feminine being thrown into the darkness of the unconscious. Pagan and Christian myths and alchemy, as well as Eastern religions, assert that odd numbers are masculine even feminine. So in Christianity, three is the one, the fourth is feminine. In alchemy, alchemy strives to remove the female element from the darkness, thus setting the stage for the alchemical marriage, which is the rec reconciliation against paradigmatic primordial opposites, such as water and fire, and that basic primordial set of opposites, man and woman. Unity results Jung emphasizes from the fusion of fours, not from threes. Can't happen from threes. So, Jung interprets Pali's attempt to achieve individuation through his analysis as analogous to the alchemist striving for the lapis, which is the philosopher's stone, which in Jung's psychology is the self or sum total of the conscious and unconscious. This is the goal of individuation. Now, in alchemy, uh, the lapis, or the philosopher's stone, results in, from a circular transformative process. The four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, continually transform one into the other until finally the fifth element, or the, the, the quintessence, emerges. This is the philosopher's stone, the highest level of enlightenment in alchemy. Now, in Jung, for Jung, the highest level of enlightenment is, is individuation, signaled by the patient drawing mandalas. Now, a mandala is the basic, the circle is the basic mandala in alchemy, and Jung must have at this stage realized, bang, this is why there are four basic functions. He always drew them in this way as objects symmetrically placed on a circle, and that must be the case, that there can be only four because the, the quaternity is the magic number, the number that allows you to have the deep insight into yourself and to form a mandala. So towards the end of, his, the end of Pauli's uh, analysis is signaled by him drawing mandalas, some of them are skewed mandalas, and finally he comes up with his vision of the world clock. As he wrote, it gave him almost sublime harmony, and it's a complicated, complex mandala, as one would expect from a complex person. I can just say a few words about it. It's a fully-fledged mandala. It's Pauli's uh, balanced psyche. Jung interpreted the vertical circle as rationality because it's divided into 32 equal segments to which this ticker ticks mechanically through. So it symbolizes rationality or the, the trinity. Jung wrote 32, you can write 32 in lots of different ways, as four times eight to single out the quaternity. And he had other things to say about 32 as well, we'll leave it at that. Um, now, Pali's vision is of a threefold rhythm the vertical circle, which cuts a horizontal circle divided into four parts, which is the quaternity. Uh, so it's tempered by a quaternity so that each is contained in the other, thus completing the incomplete trinity. Pauli's uh, struggle between three and four have ceased. So what does this have to do with the exclusion principle? Um, 
I put this up because in just a few minutes I'll come back to this. In, in, the, in December 1924, Pally wrote uh, uh, to Niels Bohr in Copenhagen a long, long, famous letter where he describes his exclusion principle. Um, Heisenberg was with Bohr at the time. They both read the letter and uh, they both had a good laugh about it. Uh, this, is, this is another cockeyed way of explaining how electronic shells fill up. Uh, but a week later, Bohr had second thoughts and he, there might be something in it. And he, and he signaled that there was something in it to Paladin when he wrote, this is complete insanity, meaning it's good. Now, uh, in 1951, uh, Pally wrote a letter to his um, uh, one-time assistant and very close colleague, his closest Jungian colleague, Marcus Fiertz, to whom, incidentally, Pally never personally told that he had been uh, analyzed face-to-face -face by Jung. That's how much of a secret Pally kept it. And in this letter, uh, Pally emphasized, as he put it, the main thing in discovering the exclusion principle is to go from three to four. Then he continues. Thus, on the psychological line, this time I have once again bumped into the problem of the transition from three to four. In neither case was it by any means Mr. C.G. Jung who suggested it to me, nor was there any deliberate conscious intention. Consequently, I am rather certain that objectively there is an important psychological and perhaps natural philosophical problem connected with these numbers, namely that three and four are archetypes. So Jung's analysis drove home to Pauli why he was having such a difficult time in discovering the exclusion principle. He was not only working, not only grappling with the physics problem, but also with his neurosis. He moved from three to four in the physics problem, moved from three to four in curing his neurosis too, namely pulling the fourth uh, basic function or feeling function out of the deep unconscious. So in this case, uh, Jung's um, analytic psychology gives some insight into the creative process. Let me continue with some of Pauli's dreams. In his waking life, Pauli was always preoccupied with uh, notions of symmetry, whether it was in physics or in psychology, that is to say the unconscious and conscious being mirror, mirror images of one another. In 1952, Pauli happened to be working on complex symmetries in quantum physics, and he had a dream. It's an illustration by an artist colleague. Uh, the, the dream was that uh, Pauli was walking, he dreamt he was walking in the constellation Perseus, and he encountered the double star Algol. In a particular way, he encountered the double star as mirror images of one another. And so this got him thinking that maybe he should look into mirror symmetry in physics, although he, he recalled some years later there was no uh, you know, call for, for doing so. And then he got to think about two other reflective symmetries, charge conjugation, where you replace matter with antimatter, and time reversal, where you change the direction of time. And in 1954, he came out with another one of his great insights, CPT symmetry, or the CPT theorem, in which if you apply CP parity, meaning mirror reflection, and T, time reversal, uh, and charge conjugation, to the equations of physics, you should get the equations of physics back again. Well, okay, big deal, what does this mean? Well, it means that agreement with relativity, which is a sine qua non in physics, and Pauli must have been delighted with this because uh, relativity was his maiden love in, in physics, and the exclusion principle enters too, and that one has to distinguish between collection of particles with integral and half integral spin. Indeed, CPT is of cosmic importance because it says that if you apply CPT, the CPT operation, to our universe, you get another universe which is indistinguishable from ours. In November of that year, of 1954, Pauli had a dream which was so curious it stuck with him for years afterwards. He was in a room walking with a dark woman, his anima, and there were others in the room doing experiments with mirrors. Only the others in the room uh, thought that the reflections were the objects themselves. And this disturbed Pauli and his anima because it, it could turn out that mirror symmetry was not conserved. From time to time, the dark woman turned into a Chinese woman. And uh, Jung's take on this was that, well, the Chinese woman uh, uh, exemplified the, the wholeness of Pauli's anima because in Chinese philosophy, Chinese philosophy strives for wholeness the reconciliation of opposites in the yin and the yang, for example. Uh, 